Welcome to the Soul Food Museum. My name is Dr. Kenneth Wilhoy, and we're here on the historic avenue of Sweet Auburn in the beautiful city of Atlanta, Georgia. And just right across the street there, we have the historic Martin Luther King's Visitor Center. The Soul Food Museum represents over 400 years of contributions made by African Americans. We have such items as Patti LaBelle, Gladys Knight, Smokey Robinson's products. We have the refrigerator and the stove. We have all type of items here at the Soul Food Museum. You're always welcome at the Soul Food Museum, located at 372 Auburn Avenue. The Soul Food Museum presents over 400 years of contributions by African Americans in the culinary arts and hospitality field. We begin our tour today with the icebox. The icebox was invented and patented in the 1800s by Mr. J. Standard. At that time, during that period, were introduced to this country the eggplant, squash, black-eyed peas, the yam, beans, okra, uh, also cabbage, spinach, and collard greens. Those are just some of the items that come from Africa, uh, have their origin in Africa, and now are known around the United States as an item that we all enjoy eating. Now in this case here we have foods that are manufactured every day throughout the United States. We have breakfast cereals, uh, Lottie Miss Clotty uh, breakfast cereals, and we have sweet potato cookies, and Michelle's syrup, which is a fourth generation syrup, and French toast, Tina Mae's French toast, and Creole potato salad, and Sheba's beef stew, famous Amos cookies, Uncle Wally's breakfast muffins. We have our own uh, ice cream companies here, Ice Supreme. And there are approximately four black-owned ice cream companies in the United States. We have coffee, which coffee originates uh, from Africa. The birth home of coffee is Africa. One might go to Starbucks for a cup of coffee. Ethiopia is the birth home of coffee. And Starbucks will tell you that coffee from Ethiopia is one of their number one sellers. In this display case, we have the breakfast cereals by Mr. Lloyd Price, the great musical entertainer. And this is his line of products, Lottie Miss Cloudy brand. We have Louis Armstrong. Dorothy Dandridge, Lloyd Price. He also has energy snack bars, raisin and banana snack bars here. We have sweet potato cookies. Of course, a display would not be complete without the Ebony Cookbook. We have Michelle's fourth generation syrups. We have Tina Mae's French toast, Creole potato salad by New Orleans Beal, Sheba African stew, famous Amos cookies, Uncle Wally's breakfast muffins, we have the sweet potato pie, ice creams, we have ice supreme, which is manufactured right here in the city of uh, Atlanta. We have coffee, cheese straws by Aunt Duck. Uh, we have real man cook, sweet potato pound cake mix, absolutely delicious. So these are just a few of the items that we have that are manufactured by African Americans here in the United States. Sylvia, the great Sylvia of Harlem, has a total line of all different type of delicious products for our consumption. And here we have pinto beans and, and black eyed peas and yams and turnip greens by Sylvia. Now, Dr. Maya Angelo has a new line for hospitality, a new line of greeting cards. She also has 
out on the market, different items for your home. I'm sure you all like potato chips, but did you know that the potato chip was invented by Mr. George Crumb in the 1800s? Mr. George Crumb had a very good friend that worked with him, and his name was Mr. Lay. Well, Mr. Lay purchased the rights of the potato chip from Mr. George Crumb, and now the potato chip is known worldwide. The younger generation is building on the legacy of the potato chip. We have here home girl potato chips and homeboy potato chips with the positive image of young girls and young boys. Chestnuts roasting over an open fire. That's one of the favorite songs during the Christmas holidays. Well, did you know that the stove was originally uh, patented and created by Mr. J. Standard in the early, uh, mid-1800s. They would put the wood on this side and close the door, and the wood would heat up the oven, and they were therefore able to cook inside the oven. Using a black cast iron skillet, often they would fry foods on the top of the stove using lard. Now, I love to cook. I cook on my stove every day. <laughs> Here we have uh, one of the most popular songs uh, during the holidays, during the Christmas holidays, one of the most popular songs is Chestnuts Roasting Over an Open Fire by Nat King Cole. Well, these are the chestnuts that grow and that is spoken about on the song. These chestnuts, the, one of the stories that's told about the chestnuts is that this is a pod, and three chestnuts grow in this pod. This pod falls from the tree to the ground, and the chestnuts lay there. But in order to have these chestnuts to roast during the Christmas holidays, you must have the male tree and the female tree planted side by side. They pollinate one another and the, have the nut. But now, the story goes that if you only have one tree, the male tree or just the female tree, those trees will eventually die out. They need one another to pollinate for pollination. The chestnut trees. Chestnuts roasting over an open fire. Jack Frost nipping at your nose. That's one of the favorite songs that we all enjoy listening to during the Christmas holidays sang so beautifully by Nat King Cole. I enjoy cooking with pecans, especially making pecan pies. Did you know that the pecan was perfected and grown in Louisiana by an African American? Isaac Hayes, one of the world's greatest entertainers, loved to cook as a matter of fact, he grew up on a farm uh, in the Memphis, Tennessee area, and they grew their own fresh fruits and fresh vegetables. Isaac Hayes has here at the Soul Food Museum the soulful barbecue sauce and fiery wing sauce and jiving jerk sauce. Isaac Hayes is also the author of Cooking with Heart and Soul.